Hey guys, just wanted to take a quick second and apologize about the echo on the audio here. I'm moving my recording setup from one room to another, and I'm having to order some additional sand dampening materials that won't be here for a few days, so if you would, just bear with me, and we'll be back to clean audio here shortly. Thanks! Shut up and sit down! Greetings, Earth Travelers. Oblix here, coming at you today from my creative test world. How y'all doing today? Man, oh man, what a great day. I tell you what, we're out here today to look at some mechanism power generation. We recently looked at this big old massive power cube that can hold just stupid amounts of power, but now we need to look at how do we fill this bad boy up. So we're going to take a look at each and every one of the generators in the mechanism system and see how they compare. We're going to start with the most basic, this heat generator. So if you take this guy and you pipe any burnable in him, uh, lava works best. He'll produce roughly 30 RF a tick. And not great. Now I do have them piping out to these trash cans, so they'll just keep on producing and producing and producing. But he does have a trick up his sleeve. Now this will consume lava. I've got some creative lava tanks up there. This will burn through the lava, and it does burn through it at a significant rate. It's very, it burns through it very, very quickly. Okay. But he does have a trick up his sleeve. If you surround him with lava, so we've got lava on all sides except for the front where the power cable's coming out of him. If I can sneak in there and click on him, you'll see he's producing a blistering 1.42 RF a tick. But he'll never consume the lava. Just the fact that he's surrounded by heat, he will produce power free of charge. So decent early game power source if you can get you know five buckets of lava and you just want to say fill a configurator with power you just can let it park it in there and let it sit it won't cost you anything but not going to run a ton of machines so if you do a combination of the both so if we surround him with lava and feed him lava you can see that he'll produce a blistering 36 RF per tick. This is not bad for running your machines, but like I said, he does consume lava at a very high rate when you put it into him. Then we step up to a bio generator. Now bio generators work great, but they do require biofuel. To get biofuel, you have to crush something biological. Zombie flesh works great. What other use do you got for the stupid stuff? Throw it in a crusher and it'll create biofuel. That can go into your biogenerator. And this guy will produce 140 RF per tick, which is pretty darn good. That will run quite a few machines around your base, all for the cost of some zombie flesh you probably didn't want in the first place. And you see I've just got a a logistical pipe carrying that biofuel right over to him. Now if you want renewable power you can use solar generators. Now this is a very basic one. This is the lowest tier of solar generator and he produces 30 RF a, a tick. Not bad. If you have a say a farming machine way off at a distance and you don't want to run a whole bunch of cables to it and you're okay with it shutting down at night time throw a solar generator on top of him. He'll run them all day long. More than enough RF to run most machines. Okay. But if it's not, you can upgrade to the advanced solar generator. A little bit bigger, a little bit taller, but produces more RF. So this guy produces 180 RF a tick. Quite a bit more RF. Uh, would be more for several machines. 
but if you prefer wind, if you live up uh, someplace with lots of mountains or a, a high space, wind is a great way to go. Now, we're down here at surface level. We're at uh, Y64. That's an average Minecraft surface. And this guy is producing 55.9 RF per tick, which is pretty darn low. If you're going to be down at this level, solar is your way to go. But, if we go up to the sky, you can see our setup way down there. We are up at absolute build limit as high as you can go. And we look at this guy. He is producing 192 RF per tick. So the higher up you go, the better your wind generators work. The lower you go, the worse they work. So you want to try to get them up way up towards build limit. If you're building a mob farm and need power for it, maybe a, you know, and you're building it way up in the sky, maybe a wind generator is a good choice. They'll also continue working at night, unlike the solar generators. Then we move up to a gas burning generator. Now we talked about gas burning generators when we talked about ore duplication in a previous episode, right? We take water from a, some form of water source, it's just an infinite water source. We pipe it into an electrolytic separator, which will turn it into a component hydrogen and oxygen. We're dumping the extra oxygen we're piping the hydrogen directly into the gas burning generator and this guy's producing 8,000 RF per tick which is pretty darn smoking good for something that's free it doesn't cost us anything to produce water right so eight you get 8,000 RF a tick on it you can run most bases on that so easy peasy cheap power production now it does burn through hydrogen fairly fast. Uh, I do have the upgrades in this guy for speed and energy. So we're, we're producing enough hydrogen to keep this guy running at the full 8,000 RF a tick. Now this setup right here looks big and convoluted and scary, but it's basically the same thing we just saw only we're putting an extra couple steps where we're switching the hydrogen for ethylene. Okay, so we've got a creative water source piped into our electrolytic separator making our hydrogen and oxygen exactly like we just saw right there. We're piping this hydrogen down into a device called a pressurized reaction chamber. And this guy's getting the hydrogen and he's getting some water. And he's getting biofuel, which we talked about back over there with our biogenerator. So he's getting rotten zombie flesh into a crusher, which is turning it into biofuel. All of that's getting fed into this pressurized reaction chamber. The water, the hydrogen, and the biofuel is becoming ethylene with a broken bin. Dad gummit, what am I thinking? I think I'm gonna do that in every episode. With substrate. So you can use this substrate later to make plastic. So you get the benefit of, of an extra material called substrate. Now we're piping the ethylene into the gas burning generator instead of the hydrogen. Now this actually produces a little bit less RF per tick. 7.89 thousand as opposed to 8 thousand for the hydrogen. But it burns a lot longer. Notice the burn rate is 28. If we look over here at our hydrogen gas burning generator, the burn rate is 100. So this is three fourths better, more efficient at its fuel consumption if you switch to the ethylene, though you're going to produce slightly less power. 
but you won't hardly notice it. So, your choice on these two. Now, this guy, you are going to have to go farm rotten flesh. So, my preference is usually just the hydrogen with it, a water source, and I'm good to go. You know, guys know I love my kitchen sink for the water source. So, this is all your basic tier of power generation for a mechanism. Let's get back into creative. There is something a wee bit stronger. Let's all just sit here and be mesmerized. How cool is that? This is a mechanism reactor. And we will look at him in another video. Obviously, he's a little more complicated. So, I hope you guys had a good time and learned something new. I sure do appreciate you hanging out with me. And until next time, get out there and make some noise. See ya!